Hey, what's up, y'all, and welcome to Gleaning the Scriptures with me, Tom Griffin. You know a lot of times people talk about works and faith as if they're two separate things, and that's not good for the collective consciousness of people. The reason that we talk about those things is because a lot of us think that if we believe, that's all that we need and everything else will just fall into place. Well, unfortunately, that is true if, if, if you're using the biblical definition of belief. But unfortunately, when we say belief, we're not actually using the biblical definition of belief. Today, we're going to explore that. So strap in and get ready, because we're about to take a biblical journey to make us better people, better at being people, better people for Elohim. There are three different levels in relation to our works. We've got our thoughts. There's also the things that we say. And you can't forget about the things that we do. Here is the one that really drives home the beliefs. What drives us. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on Adonai, Yeshua HaMashiach, and you will be saved, you and your household. That's pretty deep right there. Now this Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, this would be a perfect example of the belief but it doesn't work because faith is not just belief. Faith is action. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to Elohim must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If you're diligently seeking him and coming across one trial after another, you are allowed to, nay, you are commanded to look forward to your reward. Next we have words, the things that we say. And there is more in this word about the things that we say than about the other two things combined. But I couldn't find anything that was positive action words on uh, the results of what happens when you speak life, other than just a couple of things. Now, you know, what I did find was verse after verse after verse describing what we need to do to guard our tongues, about what is necessary to make sure that the things that we say don't end up poisoning the well of our life. Here are just a couple of things that I found that help to drive home our point. This is very important. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it says, He who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it, for the eyes of Yahweh are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of Yahweh is against those who do evil. How important is that? By your seeking righteousness, the words that you say, his ears are open to you. That's beautiful. Hold that and cherish it. Do not let it go. And that connects pretty good here with James chapter 3, verse 2, where it tells us that for we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Boom. At the end of the day, 
Words are important. And lastly, we have a whole slew of verses telling us all about the things that we do and how it's our actions that he sees and are considered unto us as righteousness. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of Elohim leads you to repentance, but in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Elohim, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Who will render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who through patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first, and then the Gentile. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So what's marking your life? Revelation chapter 20, verse 12, it puts it a little something like this. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before Elohim. And this is John being carried in visions of Elohim by Elohim, seeing real things that are going to take place. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. You see then that man is justified by works, and not by faith only. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice, and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Truly these times of ignorance Elohim overlooked, but now commands all men to repent. So as you can see, my friends, it's not just about the things that you think and the things that you say. If you're not doing the works of the kingdom, you're not going to be invited into the kingdom. And there's only two places where you can go eternally, and the latter's not worth it. So start sowing your seed. Start sowing your field with seeds of righteousness. Because at the end of the day, that is what's going to save you and your household. But what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth, Adonai Yeshua, and and believe in your heart that Elohim has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching this video. If you thought it was neat, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? And if you like this video so darn much that you want to share it with your friends, there should be a button down below somewhere that says share, and you can copy it and text it to anybody that you'd like, that you think might enjoy being strengthened by God, our Creator. There should be a few videos popped up on the screen by now, and if you'd like to watch another quick video, easy to digest, filled with love and creative knowledge from the Scriptures, Go ahead and click on one of those videos. It really helps the channel out a lot. Thanks and enjoy. Shalom.